Joining me now is Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan, the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee and the, and the, uh, and the uh, subcommittee on the weaponization of the federal government. He's also a member of the House Oversight Committee. Congressman, it's great to see you. Mr. Chairman, thanks very Good much for being here. Yeah. Can you give us a sense of your takeaway no. of the Merrick Garland hearing yesterday? Well well, first of all, we're not trying to intimidate anybody. We just want the best evidence. And the best evidence in the situation with Robert Hur and Joe Biden is the audio tape. I mean, and legitimate purpose? We're in an impeachment inquiry, for goodness sake, voted on by the full House of Representatives, one of the power ex powers exclusively that resides with the House of Representatives. If I, th That's as legitimate as it gets, for goodness sake. So remember what Robert Hur said, by the way. On page one of his report, he said Joe Biden knowingly kept, Joe Biden knowingly disclosed classified information. Then on page 231, he told us why he did so. He says to page 231, quote, Joe Biden had numerous reasons for ignoring classified procedures uh, because had motivations for ignoring classified procedures because he was writing a book, a book for which he got paid eight million dollars. So we have motive. We have the elements of the crime, but he doesn't get charged because he's this forgetful old man. OK, fine. That's what Robert Hur concluded. But we have a duty to evaluate all the evidence and the best evidence is the audio tape, particularly when the Justice Department has said we are impartial, we are independent from the White House. Well, we need to evaluate that claim as well to make sure they're operating in the way they're supposed to for the American people. That's why we want that information. So one of your colleagues earlier said that the, the document, the actual uh, printout uh, of, of the interview was, was doctored or edited yeah. by the DOJ. They took out ums and this and that. And, and, and that's one of the reasons that you want to see the audio, what specifically was doctored or, or edited? Well, that's what we've been told, exactly what you described, Maria. But we also know in other uh, speeches the president has made, the White House will change the transcript. The most mm -hmm. famous one, of course, is the one about a month ago where Joe Biden actually says the word pause, where it's meant to, as uh, you know, obviously from the teleprompter, you're supposed to take a pause there between the lines that you were reading. He actually says the word out loud. When we got the transcript, the original transcript it had pause deleted from what he said. So th we, we know they have done that in the past. They're, they've, they've told us they've altered this one. Let us see. And again, best evidence. Best evidence is an audio tape. Second best evidence is a transcript. And then for them to assert privilege, they've already given us the transcript. They can't have it both ways. They can't say, oh, we're going to give you everything except this one item, and we're exerting privilege, or asserting privilege on that. That makes no sense to me either. I think they've waived the privilege. We're entitled to the best evidence. We're an impeachment inquiry, and we're the legislative body charged with doing oversight of the executive branch. So give us the information. Well, I mean, that's, I was just going to say that. I mean, you're in charge of oversight of the executive branch. You just said it. You're the chairman of the Judiciary Committee. You're a member of the Oversight Committee. That's supposed to be your role in those roles uh, in terms of an oversight position. But you're not going to get this. You're not going to get this uh, audio tape. Is there anything else you can well, do? Because they, they keep stonewalling you, and they've done it in already, the past. They're going to continue stonewalling. You know that. We've already done. We've already held uh, uh, Attorney General uh, Garland in contempt. That's passed out of committee. I think that's going to pass on the House floor next week, so we can take that effort. We've, we've proposed yesterday, we've, we've uh, working with the Appropriations Committee, it's time to defund these things. Stop the lawfare. No more federal funds can go to these, these rogue prosecutors, these state uh, uh, DAs who go after the president. So no, months, no, no uh, funds can go to Alvin Bragg, Fonnie Willis, and any special counsel who hasn't been Senate approved shouldn't get funds. That's our legislation. That would take the money away from Jack Smith. You gotta, we got to use the power of the purse that we have. And uh -huh. we, we propose, we've also proposed legislation. We passed this out of committee a year ago. I wish it would have already passed the House floor, but we passed it out of the Judiciary Committee a year ago that says any case like President Trump's, you, the, the defendant can move it to federal court. That would solve this problem if it had been law. wouldn't have this situation with Alvin Bragg and what, what, what he's doing to uh, to President Trump, this lawfare that's going on. Well, I want to ask you about that because I want to understand if you believe this was led by the Biden administration. John Ratcliffe joined me on Sunday and said this was all coordinated, all of these uh, indictments on Trump. Watch this. What happened in this case is that after Donald Trump announced he was going to run for president, Four different sets of prosecutors went to Joe Biden's White House to meet with Joe Biden's lawyers and his Department of Justice from Georgia, from New York, Letitia James, Jack Smith, shortly before he brought his indictments, and of course, Alvin Bragg, who not only met with Joe Biden 
uh, Joe Biden's lawyers in the White House. He took one of Joe Biden's lawyers from the Department of Justice to have him bring this case. So, you know, all of these people in all of these jurisdictions, Maria, are proxies of the Biden White House. Mr. He's Chairman, right. do, do you have evidence that all of those prosecutors met with White House counsel before well, making we have these... The th Diamonds. Two things. We have the, t we have the timing. Uh, John's exactly right. Three days after President Trump announces he's running for president, Merrick Garland names Jack Smith spe special counsel. Uh, Fonnie Willis doesn't bring charges until after President Trump announces he's running for office. Alvin Bragg. Alvin Bragg said, I cannot envision a world where I would prosecute President Trump and call Michael Cohen as a witness. But that's exactly what he did after President Trump announces he's running for president. So we have the timing of it all. What we're trying to get is the communications. And we've been pushing for that for months from uh, the, the Attorney General. In fact, we've got letters from months ago where we've said, give us that information and we're going to do everything we can to get that information. Yesterday, the Attorney General said he's not sure, he didn't know if folks from the Justice Department met with Alvin Bragg, Fonnie Willis. Well, we want to know that. So you, you should be, he should have been able to answer that question. He said he wasn't sure. That's why we've asked for that information. We want to get it. But we know the timing is exactly as uh, John Ratcliffe described. Well, that sounds like critical information. Will you get that? Will, will you be able to prove it? I think we will. We're, we, you know, we're, we've, we've, I've done a hundred subpoenas, Maria. We're going to keep doing that. And more importantly, we're going to push for the legislation to get okay. done on the venue change and on the defunding of these lawfare activities yeah. that have been specifically targeted of their political opponents, namely President Trump. Well, let me get your take on what President Biden did yesterday, because you've been talking about the border so much for these last three and a half years. Now he's doing an executive action uh, that will temporarily suspend asylum claims if illegal migrant crossings top 25 500 a day for seven days. The ban stays in effect until 14 days after daily crossings reach an average of less than 1,500 encounters a day for, again, seven consecutive days. The New York Post is reporting this so-called crackdown will still allow at least 1.8 million asylum seekers into America every year, even if it's fully enforced. Here's Biden shifting the blame for the border crisis on you and your colleagues and President Trump. Watch this. Four months ago, after weeks of intense negotiation between my staff and Democrats and Republicans, we came to a clear, clear bipartisan deal. It was the strongest border security agreement in decades. But then Republicans in Congress, not all of them, walked away from it. Why? Because Donald Trump told them to. So today, I'm moving past Republican obstruction and using the executive authorities available to me as president to do what I can on my own to address the border. By the way, there are lots of carve-outs here. You can have an unaccompanied child crossing the border, and they're fine, even if it's above the 2,500. You can have visa holders and, and, and others as well. So there's a lot of room for misuse here, Mr. Chairman. Your thoughts? Well, I mean, first of all, what, uh, they told us forever the border was secure. I mean, I, I mean, we, we got to have this executive action from the president yesterday. But they told us time and time again, no, no, nothing's needed the border secure. My, Secretary Mayorkas has testified in front of Cong Congress umpteen times saying the border's secure. President Biden said it was secure. Kamala Harris, the border czar, has said it's secure. Right. But now they suddenly, five months before an election, oh, no, no, it's not really. we got to take this action. And then somehow it's Republicans' fault, even though a year ago, we passed legislation, House Bill 2, that would that would take care of this because it would put back in place the policies that President Trump had, the very policies that Joe Biden undid on day one. Right. Three things he did on day one. No more building the wall. No more remain in Mexico while we evaluate your asylum claim. And if you get here, you will not be detained. You will be released to wherever you want to go in the country. Those three things have created this situation. And yet they, they told us for three and a half years everything's fine. And now suddenly before an election, because Americans have figured it all out, they're going to do something? This is ridiculous. Uh, Senator Kramer is exactly right. This is way too little, too late. And it doesn't even work. The, 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 the uh, process he's laid out doesn't even, isn't going to work uh, as well. All right. We'll be watching all of that uh, five months before a presidential election. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thank you, sir. You bet. Good to be with you. Chairman.